This is David Peacock again, and I'm making a supplementary video to my Manet and Modern Beauty video, which I made about the Manet exhibit at the Getty Museum. I wanted to refresh my mind about the accomplishments of Manet, the paintings he had done. Well, I went to my local university library, checked out many books about Manet, and so we're gonna go over some of these books and some other books that are in my library, and I'm just gonna talk about Manet, but also art books in general. We're gonna start with a very basic thing. You know, I know that I don't know the background of all the people who are watching this. Some of them might be new to art and you're just being exposed to it and you're, some of you might have uh, taken art in college or in high school. Some of you might be art history majors. Some of you are even more advanced than that. I don't know. Say for the people who are just getting exposed to art, I remember many decades ago when I was first getting exposed to art and it is a little overwhelming because there's just thousands of years of art and there's there's hundreds of artists who are significant who are in the so-called art canon and Manet is certainly one of those. I discovered these, I used to go to use bookstores and flip through books a lot and uh, art books and um, I came across these and these are actually very inexpensive books. I mean, I've seen these, at the time when I was buying them, they were like $12 each. You know, there's a range of books depending on where you live, how, um, how much, this is kind of the cover of them. And um, they do those, there's a range of prices, you know, from $9 to $20 maybe. But that's inexpensive for what you get in this book. It's a very good introduction to the artists. There's a lots of, um, it's kind of a biography, but there's a lots of images, photographs. They compare the artists to contemporaries, who, who they're influenced by. Um, and they made these for all the, the, many of the great artists. There might be um, 15 or 20 of them. But there's Michelangelo, Van Gogh, Gauguin, Degas. The, the, most of the big names are, have one of these Time Life books. These are made in the, I think they're light, late 60s. One of the things about them is the plates aren't too bad. Here's a plate of uh, Berthe Morissot, who is in um, Manet's paintings. She's, there's no paintings of her in the Getty, but um, if you read about Manet, she's a significant woman in his life. And, it, and that we're gonna get into that later. Here's one of his wife, Suzanne, right here. One thing I'm gonna do, if I hold these books up, um, it's because I'm trying to get the auto, and I hide my face, it's because I'm trying to get the auto focus on the camera to focus on the painting and rather than on me. So that's why I'm covering up my face. One of the things I like about these is like, here's a section on Manet where they compare him to um, Renoir and they compare him to Pizarro and Sisley and, they, and they, it's just really good, well done. It really sets him in history. It sets him in art history. They talk about the politics of the time. They talk about his relationships to his peers. They talk about his relationships to his family. They talk about his significance. And, and also one of the things I want to point out is in the back, they pretty much, all, in all of the issues, they have a chronology of where he fits as far as his age. You know, they don't mention this a lot in books, but I do think that when an artist in his generation, who's the older artist? Who's the younger artist? You know, because I know in my life, if someone's older than me, it kind of means a little bit different than someone who's younger than me or my same age or, you know, you, you do associate. In general, it's easy to associate someone who's your same age. You have some things in common where someone who's 10 years older than me, I might not have as much in common or 10 years younger than me. But say Manet, particularly, he was one of the oldest ones of his generation. Pizarro was older than him, but Degas, Fantin Latour, Cezanne, Monet, Basil, you know, um, Mary Cassatt, they were younger than him. Then they have an America. His contemporaries are Winslow Homer and Whistler. Um, you know, so it's, I, li I like those chronology. Nobody else does that. And it's, it's really, I, I really like that a lot. I, can't, I do recommend these, especially if you're a beginner. If you're just learning about art, these are really good. If you've taken art history and you're, and you're more advanced, you probably look down on this. And then um, also I wanna talk about the quality of the plates. They're not too bad in these Time Life books because that's one of the issues I'm gonna be talking about is plates, 
art plates. Now we move on to the next one. Here's a Mayonnaise book that I got from the library. And um, this one is Faden Paintings and Drawings, Introduction by John Richardson. Richardson uh, is a good writer and he wrote the introduction to this, which I reread it, but I didn't really get that much out of it. So this is in black and white. So a lot of black and white plates. So you got to remember that plates have really, the art plates have really advanced in the last 10 years, I would say. Here's one that's in the exhibit of skating that's in the exhibit at the Getty. And um, it's, uh, it's not very good quality. You can kind of like feel the separation they did you know, when they did these plates and the, you know, the methods have been really advanced in our time. So people who were looking at art before <laughs> 2019 saw it different in plates. This was the only like, you know, mayonnaise not in my local museum. So I have to go to art books to see them. Well, they got these plates. Well, you know, it's a little deceptive because the color, especially with mayonnaise, because colors are so important. And in plates, it's hard to get the colors right because of the optics of the cameras and th they have to make a lot of adjustments. And, and there's also, like I'm saying here in this one, I can see kind of the, the way the colors were put in. One reason why I didn't like Manny at the beginning, be, uh, he wasn't so important to me uh, be, in the last couple of decades because I learned about him by plates and the plates weren't really weren't that good. So when I saw the Manny exhibit at the Getty, I was like, wow, he's really amazing. And so I do always try to withhold judgment on an artist until I've seen it in a museum because it is different. Paintings have energy and the optics are different when you get in front of the real object. So, and then Manet is a perfect example of this. This one was from my local library. It's called Classi dell'Art. This one is actually in uh, Italian. So, I mean, it doesn't really have a cover. It's got a, a library cover. And here's that one of Suzanne that we saw right here. So these, these are the kind of plates that people were looking at in the past and they're not that good. Also, I want to tell you about internet plates on you see in your computer. They're even different too because they're backlit. It's an image on your computer, but it's lit from behind by your monitor. That's even not exactly ex the way it is in real life. It looks good on computers, but not completely accurate. One good thing about this book is they have the all of Manet's paintings. They have little descriptions, the museums they're in, little thumbnails of them. I think there's 451 paintings and they have all of them. So in an official book, it's called the Catalogue Raisonne, where they put, they, someone has collected all the paintings of a painter and it's the, this is not really one because these are thumbnails, um, but it's probably pretty accurate. Most Catalogue Raisonnes have a few errors if you really get into it, but in general, they're the, um, the, the official book of all the paintings. There's another one we're going to move on to. This is a series by Abrams. They have a lot of uh, artists in this series, in this format. Another problem with plates is that, you know, like they'll have a lot of black and white plates in this one. Well, one issue is, is that um, the sizing, like they fit these to fit, they put these plates in to fit the size of the page. So one, one time you might see this painting and it's real large in one book and then in another book it's real small. And if you don't, you know, the size is deceptive. If you, it's, it's difficult to um, look at the dimensions and, uh, and think about how big or small this is. But when you see it in a museum, you get an idea of the size and that it has an influence on how, it's, um, how I look at it. This one is good, it has some drawings in here. Um, it has some drawings of Manet and of course black and white, you can't go wrong with that. Like this cat one. Now you'll see that cat one for Manet in a lot of books and I've seen it a full page. This one is half a page. So that's an example of how they change it. Here in this, in these series, they usually have the plate and then they have a little description of it on the side. And um, this is one of the things that was in the Manet exhibit. And I talked about this plate of, um, the, they call it the tipsy woman. Well, in the Getty, they call it the plum. So one other thing is sometimes they have different titles for these paintings. I don't want to make a definitive uh, judgment on this one. It's just, I'm just showing this to you. Okay, now we're going to move on to the biography. Now, here is a book that's a biography of Manet, 
It's written in 1996 by Beth Archer Brombert, Edouard, Edouard Manet, Rebel in a Frock Coat. Now I did read this for the Manet exhibit because I really like this book. I read it very closely. I enjoyed this book and she, she really discusses Manet. She talks about his history, his biography, his influence. You know, a couple things about Manet. He had enormous criticism in the press. Just outrageous. People just laughed at him uh, and ridiculed him and it really affected his life a lot. She goes a lot into his relationship with women and Berthe Morsot, Marceau, however you pronounce it. it. She inspired me to read more about Berthe Marceau who has some letters and apparently some of uh, Berthe Marceau's family uh, destroyed some of the letters so I'm disappointed about that but I, I do want to read about that. And, and Berthe married Manet's brother. So she joined his family. So that's a, there's a re really strange thing going on there. And the, the author, Beth, she seems to like Berthe and uh, as opposed to Manet's wife, Suzanne, who is, she criticizes pretty And they tell a good story and they're very entertaining. And I, I, I like them the best of all the things I read. You do have to question them. She kind of comes down hard on Emile Zola, who was a contemporary writer of Manet, and he, well, when Manet was getting criticized in the press, Zola wrote for the newspapers and defended Manet, and it was very a big deal because he got associated with Manet, and then Manet did a portrait of Zola. Bromberg, she makes a point that she kind of insinuates that Zola did it just for publicity. He just did it so he could be controversial too, you know, and um, I'm gonna discuss that a little bit because I'll move on to the next book because that made me read by this book, which was that sale at the Getty. And this is um, looking at Manet by Emile Zola. So it's what Emile Zola wrote about Manet. And I really like this book. I thought it was excellent. I thought he had a good understanding of Manet. He writes about being, uh, having his portrait done by Manet. And he talks about how Manet is really interested in nature. And he had a very, Manet had a very different style. He was, um, he was educated in the official salons, but he had a very, he had his own style. As far this one is in my own library, and it's uh, Manet. This is what the cover looks like. I bought this at a used bookstore for uh, $10. And this is by Henri Perriuchot. I didn't reread this, but I did have a good memory of this book. An okay biography. It, it, I, I just, I, from memory, I remember I liked it. But it's, not, it's certainly not as um, in-depth as Bromberg. It's a little more superficial, but it, if, you, you know, if you're new to Man A, you know, this is a good one. It's only $10. Okay, now we're going to move on to the more um, academic kind of books in a general. This one is by Locke, and it's called Man A and the Family Romance. Now this guy's more of an academic, you know, and he gets very into the details of the, the paintings and the descriptions. And it's more of a, um, sometimes the academic writers are more um, documentation of what's going on. Here's this thing. The street singer's hand blocks our view of her neck as well as her mouth. In fact, Manet's handling of her neck area is very problematic. To the left hand, we can barely glimpse the wedge of her neck as well as the round neckline of her, deck, d her dress. But to the right side is a different story. We see no neck at all, and the neckline of the dress is pushed significantly lower. Manet deliberately leaves this area ambiguous. You know, he gets really into these details, and it just, it's, it's really kind of dull, to tell you the truth. But this guy has a PhD. You know, he was trained by the institution, and I'm trying to figure out in my mind what the, the difference between is these PhD art historians, how they write, and how a biographer writes, like Beth Brombert, who I really like. And to me, the, the, the PhDs are kind of, they're not taught to be too entertaining. They're, they're in, they, they've got this institutional education and they kind of speak in an institutional voice. And you can't really tell the difference between any of them. And they're very into facts and um, they, the, 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 the narrative is very loose and they, they just speak, they write completely from the mind. There's nothing from the heart really or from um, common sense. 
You know, it's just very documentation. Like, you know, writing is an art and these PhD people, they're not writing art. They're just, um, oh, I wish I could think of a good word. They're just documenting things. The, the scholars, they write with an institutional voice, you know. They spend many years getting their PhD from a university. Then they usually work for a university or a museum and they speak for a they speak for an institution. So they're not really individualized. And there's a really big difference in the way they write compared to breath. Uh, I'm not sure her background exactly, but the biographers are just so much more entertaining. Next one I'm gonna do, this one was bought called Perspectives on Manet, and this is um, edited by, um, and this is pretty new, this is 2012. This is edited by Therese Dolan. You know, I, re I look at these and I try, to re I try to read them, and I do read them, but I'm always feel, feel kind of depressed when I finish. It just doesn't feed my fire for art or for Manet. I just kind of get depressed. You know, here's one, Manet and the Impressionist Movement. Well, I remember reading about how, um, is Manet an Impressionist? You know, he was the older one, uh, but there's a lot of reasons why he worked in the studio while the Impressionist worked in uh, outdoors. So he kind of didn't really fit in for that reason. So they're just kind of spent a lot of time talking about categorizing Manet. And, uh, you know, I'm not that interested in that. It does not that big a deal. They really get hung up on the definition. Is he an Impressionist or not? Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the final one, which is the book Manet and Modern Beauty. Now, this is the one that accompanies the exhibit sold at the Getty. Now, this exhibit was um, organized by the Getty and it also appeared in the Art Institute of Chicago. Now the plates on this are really excellent. They're top quality plates. I'm sure they went out of their way to get the colors as best they could with the most modern equipment because, you know, the Getty's got some deep pockets and they've got some smart people who work there. Uh, let's see, I'll show you a plate. Here's these two images which I show in my video and they're seen at the, um, the Getty exhibit, and these colors are very, very good. They're very good, but like I said, even though I'm looking at the colors and enjoying it, it's really different with Manet when you go see him in the, in the, in the museum. It's really different. Now, as far as the writing here, you have the two editors are, uh, well, the three editors, Scott Allen, Emily Beanie, and Gloria Groom. So there, uh, I know, Mr. Allen, Miss Beamy, they're PhD art historians. So like I said, they write like art historians, okay? They're not, for me, I really don't enjoy their writing. I, uh, I look at it and I get a little bit out of it, but I put it down and just, uh, it just doesn't excite me at all. As far as I can say, they're just kind of documenting things and uh, they're writing in a very professional, dry way. It's just like crummy adjectives. They don't really think about how the art affects them. One thing that might have been interesting, uh, I'm interested in these, this is, this is an amazing exhibit with paintings worth millions of dollars. It might have been interesting to do one essay on how they organize this. Who organizes this? You know, is it uh, Mr. Allen or Miss Beanie or Miss Groom? Who gets on the phone and calls up the museum in Rio de Janeiro and says, uh, we want to get that painting for our man for our Getty Museum? You know, do they pay that museum to, to rent it? Do they exchange another painting for it? That they're traveling across the United States, that painting might be worth um, $10 million, $20 million. How do they insure it? I think that would be an interesting essay, but you don't see something like that. They just do these other essays on um, Man A in the 18th century. Whoa, that's a pretty broad thing, you know. I don't really know who they're writing for, but it, as, as a member of the public, it doesn't do much for me. So I buy these, I got this for the plates. And I'm rewarded because they are good quality plates. They are better than the plates from the earlier books I showed. So the uh, imaging material that we use today is much better than uh, the, in the past. And that's really, it's really great. In the back, they have little thumbnails of 
they have thumbnails of things that are in the exhibit, paintings in the exhibit, and they have uh, little, uh, they have short descriptions of where these paintings are, the size, and they are a little more candid in these notes in the back, and I really enjoyed the notes. I read most of the notes, and I enjoyed that very much. The provenance, the exhibitions, depending on where you buy it, I've seen it for $43 on Amazon. Uh, the Getty sells it for like $60 or $70, but for that, for $60, this is so worth it, especially if you, um, you know, you don't live in California, you're not gonna see the real thing. You can't get out here to see this exhibit. This is a, an amazing deal for $60. Oh, it, it'll be great to add to anybody's library and I recommend purchasing it that. That wraps it up. Some of my opinions on the, the Man A books and I wanna say thanks for watching. And if you wanna see my review of the Man A and Modern Beauty at the Getty Museum, look through my channel and you should be able to find it.